students today we are going to next points from the chapter number 3 translucences in previous session we discussed about the what is meant by translucer types of translucer and one of the passive translucer that is ldr Transducer is a device which converts one form energy, one form of energy, into another form. In this session, we are going to discuss few more transducers. These are capacitive transducer, also known as displacement transducer, LVT. This is also known as displacement transducer, and one more transducer that is piezoelectric transducer. so let's start from the first transducer that is capacitive transducer we know that the capacitor is nothing but two parallel conducting plates separated by an insulating medium called as a dielectric the ability to store the charges is called as capacitance and that is measured in farad so using this principle we are going to construct one of the transducer that is called as capacitive transducer so we know that the capacitance value c depends on various factors one of the factor is area of the plate distance between the two plate and medium used between the two plates that is called as a dielectric medium but once the capacitor is formed we cannot change the area of the plates one more that is we cannot change the dielectric medium between the two plates but if we want to change the capacitance value we can change the distance between the two plates and using this principle we are going to construct capacitive transducer we know that the capacitance value is inversely proportional to the distance between the two plates and therefore we are going to change the capacitance value by changing the distance between the two plates we know that the capacitor equation c is equal to k a epsilon 0 upon d and that is measured in farad where a is a k sorry k is a dielectric constant a is area of the plate d is nothing but the distance between the plates and epsilon 0 is a permittivity of the free space so or dielectric medium so using this we are going to construct that transducer but it requires the external source and hence it is one of the passive transducer here one of the plate is is a fixed plate that is called as a static plate and another plate is a variable plate and that is also known as a diaphragm and when the pressure is applied on one of the plate or variable plate then the distance between the two plate will be changed means this is the construction of the capacitive transducer in which this is one of the fixed plate and that is the initial position of the plate a when the pressure is applied external pressure is applied here on the plate the plate will be displaced and this is the suppose the displaced position of the plate a and this is the distance between the two plate initially the distance between the two plate is that much from this to this that distance is maximum means capacitance value is minimum because capacitance value is inversely proportional to the distance between the two plate if the pressure is applied external pressure is applied here then what will happen the plates get deflected and means this is your static plate plate b this is a fixed plate which never changes its position but when the pressure is applied the position will be like this and this will change the distance between the two plate the distance becomes narrow 
and the capacitance value be increased. The total assembly is enclosed and that is insulating enclosure made up of plastic or ceramic and this is your insulated support to this static plate or plate B and when the plate changes its position plate A changes its position the capacitance value will be changed this is one of the heat isolation cavity because the change in the temperature may also affect the capacitance value so that is a basic simple construction of the capacitive transducer means external pressure is converted in terms of equivalent voltage so this is one of the passive transducer because for storing the charges we require the external battery or external supply so this is one of the transducer there are different applications of this capacitive transducer this is also known as displacement transducer because the plate is displaced or it is also called as a pressure transducer because when the pressure is applied on the dynamic plate or changing plate this will be change the capacitance value means pressure is converted in terms of electrical voltage there are different applications of the capacitive transducer it is used in the weighing machines means used in shop for weighing the particular quantity measurement of the air velocity it is used in the liquid liquid column pressure measurement and it can be also used for the measurement of blood pressure so these are some applications of the capacitive transducer it can measure both static as well as dynamic pressure dynamic means changing pressure and static means fixed pressure both type of pressure can be measured by using the capacitive transducer it has some advantage and that advantage is both the parameters can be measured means both quantities static as well as dynamic quantities can be measured using this there may be the question explain the capacitive transducer or explain the construction of pressure transducer then you have to explain the capacitive transducer next transducer we are going to discuss in this session this is also known as displacement transducer but the working principle is different and that is nothing but linear variable differential transducer that is called as a LVDT it is based on the different principle and that principle is known as mutual inductance we know that when one of the inductor is taken and from that the current flows then it induces EMF around itself and one when one more coil is placed or one more inductor is placed near it current also flows from that second coil and this is called as a mutual inductance means these two coils are physically separated but magnetically linked means this is the one of the first coil this is called as suppose primary coil and current flows from that then EMF will be induced and EMF will be induced around itself so this is called as a self inductance but when we place one more coil near it these two coils are physically separated means this is a primary coil and this is called as a secondary coil and current flows from the primary then when the secondary is placed near to primary current also flows from the secondary coil and and as emf is also induced means magnetic field is produced around the secondary also means primary and secondary these two coils are physically separated but magnetic link and this is called as magnetic flux and this is known as mutual inductance the construction of this LVDT based on mutual inductance so it requires the external supply therefore it is also one of the passive transducer so this converts the displacement into an electrical energy and therefore it is also known as differential transducer now we will see why this is called as a displacement transducer and how it works so this LVDT has one primary this one is the primary and 
there are two secondary coils secondary one and secondary two these two secondaries are equal number of turns and connected in series but opposite in direction means if the current from the secondary flows in this direction the current flows from the secondary is in this direction means these two coils are connected in series but in opposite direction so if the voltage developed across this is called as a v secondary 1 this is called as a v secondary 2 so both has may be same amplitude but may be different polarity means suppose this v1 is positive then it will become negative and it will be suppose positive then it will may be negative and so the exact voltage is taken across both the secondaries and therefore the final output will be difference between the secondary 2 and secondary 1 so output will be v0 is equal to v secondary 1 minus v secondary 2 so that will be the output voltage so there is one of the core that is called as a ferrite rod placed between the coils when this ferrite rod moves or ferrite core moves and emf will be induced accordingly in the secondary one and secondary two no doubt primary carries the current means input is connected to the primary coil and the two secondary coils are placed near to primary hence due to the mutual induction current also flows from the secondary one and secondary two and this depends on the position of the core this core now we see how this lvdt will work so here the displacement of the core displacement of this core will be converted in terms of equivalent voltage across the secondary so now we will see how this lvdt is constructed as it requires the external battery or external supply for the primary here primary is connected to the external source hence it is called as passive transducer and output voltage is taken across the secondary one and secondary two so that is the difference between the voltage induced in the secondary one and voltage induced in the secondary two coil so this is one of the passive transducer so one more diagram here which clearly indicates how the lvdt is constructed this is one of the primary coil and ac input is applied here to the primary so there are two coils which are connected in series that is called as a secondary coil this is the secondary one and this will be the secondary two so note down the direction suppose we start from here the secondaries are connected like this here this is the direction of the suppose current and now current flows in this direction from the secondary one and like this so in the secondary two current flows from this direction and secondary one current flows from this direction so voltage induced in both the coils are in opposite polarity so the output voltage will be difference between the voltage induced in the secondary one and voltage induced in the secondary two when the ac current flows from the primary coil equivalent voltage will be induced in the secondary one as well as secondary two and the output voltage will be difference between the voltage induced in the secondary one and voltage induced in the secondary two therefore the output voltage is v secondary one minus v secondary 2 this voltage induced in the secondary one and secondary two depends on the position of this ferrite rod and this ferrite rod is attached to the external handle from where we are going to apply the external pressure or displacement according to the external pressure or external force the ferrite rod can be move in the gap between the primary and secondary coil so if we want to clear the working of this lvdt suppose initially this ferrite rod this ferrite rod is exactly at the center means this ferrite rod 
is exactly at the center. The voltage induced in the secondary one and voltage into the secondary two, both are equal. So output voltage will be zero. So output voltage will be zero. So let us start the discussion about the detail working of the LVDT. Up to now, we discussed that LVDT is constructed consisting of one primary and two equal and opposite secondary, and based on the mutual inductance. Depending on the position of the ferrite rod, EMF and EMF will be induced in the secondary one and secondary two, and output voltage will be difference between the secondary one and secondary two voltages. So this. Suppose the case number one, the rod is exactly at the center. Suppose this is the one of the primary, and this is the core, and this is the secondary one and secondary two. So rod is exactly at the center. Secondary one voltage and secondary two voltage both are same, and therefore the output voltage will be zero. So output voltage V secondary one minus V secondary two will be zero. If the rod move towards the if the rod move towards the left side means towards the secondary one then output v0 is in phase with the secondary voltage one that v secondary one means the v secondary one voltage will be maximum and v secondary two voltage will be minimum and case number 3 if the rod move towards the right side means towards the secondary two then voltage induced in the secondary two is greater than the Voltage induced in the secondary one, so output voltage is in phase with the secondary two voltage. That is V secondary two. So that is the simple working of LVDT. Means the displacement of the ferrite rod defines the output voltage. So now we can say that the displacement of the ferrite rod is converted in terms of the voltage. There are different advantages of the LVDT. One of the advantage is it provides the infinite resolution. Its output is high, and this LVDT is very very highly sensitive. Means very minute displacement can provide the larger output at the secondary. It has good input and output linearity. Means if the input changes linearly, output is also changes linearly. It provides very less friction. hysteresis is also low and it has very low power consumption minimum losses are observed in the lvdt so it can provide the maximum output power similarly there are some disadvantages of the lvdt one of the disadvantage that if very high displacement is required for generating high voltages means for the higher displacement we require the higher voltages and the size of the lvdt also increases and which will increase the cost of the lvdt it is very sensitive to the external magnetic field hence the sense shielding is required in case of the lvdt and the performance of that transducer also affected by the vibrations because it may change the position of the ferrite according to the vibration so using this transducer in vibrating areas is little bit avoided so it can be also affected by the temperature changes so these are some disadvantages of the lvdt so where the lvdt is are used these are used to use the displacement from the range of fraction of millimeters to the centimeter means it can measure the minute displacements also here it can be used to measure the force also weight and pressure etc because it is a one of the secondary transducer it can be used in the accelerometer to measure amount of accelerations of objects it is also used in servo mechanism to measure the dynamic moments means it can be used to measure the dynamic parameters also 
Now, the next transducer we are going to discuss that is a piezoelectric crystal. We know the piezoelectric property. Piezoelectric property means in the nature there are some materials which are called as a piezoelectric materials. When the pressure is applied on the piezoelectric material, then equivalent voltage will be induced, uh, developed across two opposite surfaces. That is called as a piezoelectric effect. And using this principle, we are going to construct the piezoelectric transducer. Means when the basic principle is when the piezoelectric crystal is kept under mechanical stress or pressure, it produces potential difference across to its opposite surfaces. So using this, we are going to construct the piezoelectric. The pressure is nothing but piezo and this is called as a piezoelectric effect. So there are certain materials which shows the piezoelectric property, Rochelle salt, turmaline, quartz, crystal. These produce good electric voltage when subject to changing pressure. Here, there is no necessity of external battery or supply for its operation. Hence, it is called as active transducer. It generates its own energy. When pressure is applied, automatically voltage will be generated. Means one form of energy means pressure is directly converted into voltage without any external supply or external battery. That is the simple construction of piezoelectric crystal. This is one of the crystal. Suppose that is a Rochelle salt or quartz or barium titanate crystal. This crystal is placed on a rigid support. This is one of the rigid support. And the two opposite surfaces are taken as output terminals. These two output terminals provide the equivalent voltage developed across the two opposite surfaces. Here there is a force summing element that is one of the very thin paper or metal sheet which is provided with the suspension and when the pressure is applied through the pressure port there is one small aperture and through that aperture the external pressure is applied on this force summing element this force summing element is nothing but this force summing element is nothing but one of the very thin metallic or paper which can apply the external pressure on this piezoelectric crystal and this total assembly is enclosed in a plastic or ceramic or metal case and this is the construction of piezoelectric transducer means it contains one pressure port that is a small aperture through which we are going to enter the external pressure this is the force summing element which is a very thin or thin metallic plate having the suspension and this is a crystal that is called as a piezoelectric crystal when the pressure is applied on this it will create the equivalent voltage and this is a reserve support and this is enclosed in one of the enclosure so using this basic principle this transducer is constructed this is one of the active transducer there are different applications of this piezoelectric transducer one of the well known application that is crystal microphone generally the piezoelectric crystals are used for the microphones this can be used in a phonogram pickup cartridge to receive signals from the phonographic record these signals are very very weak signals that can be uh, sensed by using this piezoelectric transducer and these are very high frequency signals so it can be used for the high frequency accelerometers besides that there are some advantages and disadvantages of the inhibitors also one of the advantage of the piezoelectric crystal these are very small in size therefore it reduces the size and this we can make uh, portable devices using this it can provide high stability for the higher temperature range it has very high frequency response so 
because of this these are used for the high frequency applications it does not require the external battery or supply and disadvantage for this LVDT one of the disadvantage is that it cannot measure the static means fixed pressure and that is one of the disadvantage it may happen that the output voltage is affected by the temperature variation if there is a variation in the temperature sometimes it will affect the output voltage so up to now we discuss different type of transducer for this session note down some exercise there may be the question in the first that is explain the construction and working of capacitive transducer this question will be for 3 marks you have to draw the construction figure it's working you have to explain the basic principle applications of the capacitive transducer next will be what will the displacement transducer and explain the working of LVDT with construction diagram you have to explain in detail with figure and advantages and applications and the last question in this session what will the, the piezoelectric effect what is piezoelectric effect and explain the piezoelectric transducer so for this session we discuss capacitive transducer LVDT and piezoelectric transducer capacitive transducer is one of the passive transducer LVDT is also one of the passive transducer and piezoelectric transducer is one of the active transducer all transducers are also called as displacement transducers or also called as pressure transducer here this piezoelectric transducer is called as pressure transducer capacitive and LVDT is called as displacement transducers also so this is the end of the session 2 thank you for the next session we will discuss last transducers in this topic thank you